Now all of this leads me to ask a new question. Are our buildings happy? Now that may seem like a pretty flaky question for a real estate developer to be asking, but I think it's a critical one. And I was reminded of this a couple of weeks ago when I was in Germany. And I was visiting a building that we were thinking of buying in a major German city. It was a beautiful piece of architecture, 100% rented to credit tenants. But when you talk to the employees who worked in the building, you got a different story. They didn't like it. There were no amenities, nowhere to shop, nowhere to eat, no gym, and no collaborative space. In short, this was an unhappy building. And because of that, I would bet that in five or 10 years, it's not gonna be 100% rented unless the landlord takes a fundamentally different approach to his customer. I contrast that building with Rockefeller Center. Now, we at Tishman Spire are very lucky to be the current owners, but we can't take any credit for the brilliance of the original vision. That was all the Rockefeller family. In the depths of the Great Depression, they bet their whole family fortune that they could create a new kind of real estate. And why is it that 80 years later, Rockefeller Center is still the case study and the point of comparison for mixed use development all over the world? It's not the Art Deco architecture, though that is gorgeous. And it's not the artwork that's embedded in the Indiana limestone. It's not Atlas and it's not Prometheus. It's community. It's the public meeting the private. People come there to ice skate. They come there to ballroom dance, to see the Christmas tree. We have office, retail, restaurants, entertainment, and it's all sitting right on top one of New York's most important subway stations. Rockefeller Center is a happy building. 